Coming up next, we'll get a look at some future Final Four stars as America's best high school hoopsters show their special sauce in the McDonald's All-American High School basketball game. CBS Sports presents the McDonald's All-American High School Basketball Game, sponsored by McDonald's. Official break of the Olympic Games. Nissan, it's time to expect more from a car. And by priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. It was my first opportunity of being in a, a nationally exposed uh, situation, playing on television and, and playing with that type of talent. I think the McDonald's game, it's every kid's dream to get, get selected and then to go there and play against the best players in the country. Downtown Pittsburgh, home of the Steelers and Penguins, and today the Steel Town welcomes 20 of the nation's top high school basketball players. From the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's the McDonald's All-American High School Basketball Game as the West, they're all set to take on the East. Hello, everybody. Glad you could be with us here in Pittsburgh. I'm Gus Johnson along with Bill Raftery. And, Coach, you're just getting back from the Meadowlands, Kentucky, Syracuse, and the big one. Amazing. A dedication, talent, and coaching. A nice combination. And here we've got these great stars that next couple of years, fortunately, both of us will get a chance to see them during the NCAA. College basketball is hoping that one player definitely Definitely will be joining them in the college ranks next year. Kobe Bryant out of the Philadelphia area, area, and he's a good one. Articulate, a great presence, the ability to light it up when he gets into a room. And one of his main classrooms is right here on the basketball floor. A guy that can attack the tin. You can see in these replays a variety of releases. Send it in, Kobe. The a deep shot to compliment. So you back up. He nails that one. Meanwhile, for the West, Mike Bibby, the son of Henry Bibby, will be leading the show at point guard, and Lute Olsen's getting a pretty good player here. Well, out from that Phoenix area, a guy that can run the show, terrific shooter from deep, averaging 35 points a game, electrifying with the dribble, change of pace, the little kiss release when needed, or the pull-up. And what's amazing, a lot of these guys have the total package in or out. And your starting lineups for the West. Robinson, Lester Earl, the slam dunk champion. Collier, Bibby, and Corey Benjamin. And for the East, Tim Thomas out of Patterson Catholic in New Jersey. Jackson, F. Jamal, Holloway, and Kobe Bryant. The officials for today's game, Tom Lopes, Jackie Lube, and John Pugh. And in the series, it's all tied up. The West and the East, nine games apiece. Nice little steal. Wow. Here we go. <laughs> Started off right. You run, I'll deliver. Shaheen on the money. And the East goes, little man, Gus Johnson. Here's Mike Bibby inside. Got caught in midair. Shot won't fall for him. And we'll get a jump ball situation. Uh, some pretty fair competitors right out here. Talent above the rim. Someplace I wasn't familiar with during <laughs> my play days. Uh, the possession arrow gives the East to the basketball. First opportunity for these kids to play a game with the college rules. Two halves. They'll get six fouls in the ball game instead of five. Also, the 35 second clock. Turnover here. Bibby in transition. No look to Mike Robinson. They can catch, though, can't they? Big, quick snap pass by Bibby. Wow. Well, running the show. A lot of people think the best lead guard and Lee runs the offense and beats his guy. Now, we told you about some of the rules. Two 20-minute halves, a 35-second clock. Only man-to-man -man defense in this ball game. Each player will get six fouls, and each player must play at least ten minutes. Here's Evdemar. Look strong there. Rebound for Bryant. He has it rejected by Lester Earl. Corey Benjamin in transition. 
poked away. Hold on here, Gus. Well, a little Barry in him from the slam dunk contest. Now, he can get up longer and higher than his dad. Joe, now Joe could play. Eight years with the 76ers, also eight years in Italy. And a LaSalle College University later, after I sent the donation. <laughs> Here's Benjamin. Oh. Corey, Corey Benjamin. How deep, huh? Corey Benjamin right now undecided. His brother plays for Oregon State. And there's that wizardry from the top. Here's Robinson headed for Purdue. The play for Gene Cady. Second straight McDonald's All-American headed to Purdue. Luther Clay was a freshman there this season. And a couple of years ago, a pretty good one. Uh, Glenn Robinson. The big dog. Benjamin again off the back of the iron. Well, these games can get out of hand. I think anybody who runs a good half court, look at this sleight of hand. Holloway. How about him, the little sneak to peek? Check the rear view. Thought he was going to leave it off the glass. Four points for Shaheen. Bibby the other way. And he'll go straight to the cup for the bucket. So as expected, Rob, pretty quick tempo so far. And Timmy Thomas, uh, the, one of the problems I see in watching practice last week, they all can do so much. What position are they going to play? You saw Timmy outside. Benjamin floating to the basket. Knocked out of bounds, and we'll head the other way. Now the head coach for the East, John Miller. Blackhawk High School in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. His son, Sean, played at Pitt and was the second all-time leader in assists in the Big East Conference. Has another son, Harry, that they say is going to be a pretty good one as well. Not too bad. In fact, he got a chance to play in the scrimmage that I was at on Wednesday. Archie, a little guy, toughness, uh, good backcourt leadership. But here's a guy who won the state championship in 92, 95, and 96, not too bad. And the year they didn't win, Beaver Falls, the rival in town, Blackhawk High School, in Beaver Falls, PA, home of Joe Namath. You just come up with all the games. <laughs> well, if you don't know that, you've got to get out of sports, right? Meanwhile, for the West, Nate Harris from Booker T, Washington, and Tulsa. 14 years he spent at Booker T, and he's coached some pretty good ones. Clint McDaniel. Also, young man that's playing at Arkansas right now, Landis Williams, Richard Dumas, who plays for the 76ers. An old friend of mine was the coach before him, Mike Mims, who later went on to Oklahoma. Ten seven, the East right now on top of the West. Lester Earl posted up on Tim Thomas inside. Here's Earl, makes the catch, but he was unable to hold on to it. Eskimov loses it. Jason Collier, and they'll slam it in. Yeah, there's the guy. We talked about playing a lot of positions. He can shoot the three. Nice look. A little too much heat on for Thomas. But Collier, one of those guys, as a youngster, he was a swimmer. And he's a very mobile, long muscle kind of a guy. And I think he'll have a lot of fun playing for Bobby Knight, learn the game. I think that'll bring this Indiana program back to the heights that uh, they richly deserve. Great tradition. Pass ahead. Here's Jackson. Whoa. Well, you got to give it up, too. I know it looks pretty. Uh, Kobe standing on the other side, but guys like to take it into the hole and with a little bit of authority, as well as Stephen Jackson out of Lincoln, Texas. He's the 14th McDonald's All American from Oak Hill Academy. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? On his way to Arizona, he'll play with Mike Bibby. Now, one of the notes on him, and I've got to apologize for saying he should have given it up, he's known as a guy who may look for the pass before the shot. But I think you get to these environments, Gus, and you've got to let it hang out a little bit. Showing a lot of rise there. Here's Bibby. Quick release off the front of the iron. And Shaheen lob past Timmy Thomas. And this one goes out of bounds. Now, I know they can elevate Shaheen. <laughs> he sort of smiling. <laughs> that one was a rather <laughs> long way from connecting. Shaheen Holloway right now looking at Seton Hall, Duke, and also Cal Berkeley. Inside, Lester Earl has it stripped, recovered by oh. Bibby. How about that one, huh? Are they going to score the goal? And they score it. Terrific reaction. 
Right here, you can see the doubling of the post. And this is a guy, oh, Earl, that's going to be a terrific player once he gets some inside play. But a lot of traffic. And look at, take the hit, the kiss. That little rattle and roll, too. Four points right now for Mike Bibby. Nice post. Got to catch it, though. F to Maul. Loses the handle on the baseline, and it goes out of bounds. I noticed the other day, trying to dribble a little bit too much. Catch it, shoot it, give it up. Don't get yourself in trouble, but that's part of learning the game. Seal Eftemar out of Long Island Lutheran High School. He's undecided right now on the Hillerton College, looking at Pittsburgh. 15.48 to go in the first half of play. The McDonald's High School All-American game. The East, they lead it by one. Kobe Bryant taking it to the cup. And we played ever. The whole team was in a zone. That was the start of my career. It's just like a fairy tale. They'll never forget their road to glory. That's Ilya Evdomov, the father of Basile. He plays professional basketball in France. So he's watching his son in the All-American game today. And not a bad tutor to have your father who's still playing basketball to help pretty, you out a little bit. Pretty good example. He flew into Newark on Thursday. The Racanellis picked him up who are related to the Sproles, whose home, he's, uh, the, he's the, they're the guardian for him in Amityville, New York. And of course, they got a nice little look here. Kobe. But to finish it, they had a book to talk to one another because of the communication difficulty all the way up here to Pittsburgh. So the Racanellis, his daughter, went. Nice backdoor cut to Brian. Evdomov coming to the United States from Bulgaria. And he is a big young man, 6'9", 235. Here's Thomas, squaring up and knocks down the jumper. Four points for Timmy Thomas. Uh, he is the whole package, Timmy Thomas. Uh, people that watch him on a regular basis say if he concentrates to be one of the great ones. Oh, Benjamin! I believe. Corey Benjamin. Corey Benjamin with five. Here's Holloway. Shaking and baking. Almost has it taken away. Thomas dumping it down low to Jackson. And it's stolen away by Lester Earl. West trying to run. Mike Robinson straight to the rack. And he'll flush it down. I wonder if these guys can shoot. <laughs> I know they can go strong. To right, the goal. right now they don't need to, Coach, to the way they're taking it to the basket. Who's in charge of the D, Gus? <laughs> It's Kobe Bryant on the wing, trying to get the step. Short inside, rebounded. Jackson leads it to Thomas. How about the quick elevation, too? Not much room to step and go. That's the Earl in the corner. Long rebound out to Bryant. East running. Holloway, nice deal. That's his game. Wheel and deal. Shane. 18-17. And the West and the East getting ready to make wholesale substitutions. Not too bad, the follow here by Benjamin. He logs more miles than United. A big. And just to top it, Gus, we're going to have to rate these jams, don't you think? Give them eight, nine, and tens out of jealousy. So Mike Robinson from Peoria, Illinois, some consider him the best basketball player to ever come out of Peoria. And he's heading for Purdue. Watch out. And it looks like Purdue could use some size to pop the jump a little bit. Uh, but he over 40 points 15 times. So you know he can ring the bell. Gene Cady will be whistling and smiling. Maybe not during the game, <laughs> but post game. Hard nose kind of a guy. Pretty good outside jumper. And can finish as you saw. Is Richard Hamilton on his way to Connecticut? His first shot of the ball game. Rebounded by Lauren Woods. Winfred Walton for three, and he bangs it in. Walton out of Persian High School in Detroit, Michigan. Undecided right now. Rumored to possibly be going to UAB. How about that high school? Rob. Simpson, Spencer Haywood, Ted Sizemore as well with baseball. Will Robinson, long old time coach, started there years ago. Here's Mateen Cleaves, headed for Michigan State. 
Tried to go around his back, kicked out of bounds, and will stay down here. The team plays very explosive, penetrates, gives it up real well, a real number one. Bibby's a point, Holloway's a point. He's a bodyguard. <laughs> Here's Woods inside. Hook shot, and it rattles in. Lauren Woods, seven feet, one inch. And the Wake Forest on the other end. That's Jermaine O'Neal. <laughs> uh, their high school coaches have to be watching, saying, is somebody going to guard? Offensive rebound inside by Woods. Lauren Woods, uh, three-year, five-star kid. Nice touch. Not a bad inside game. Plays hard. The Tim Thomas, they say. The last pick. With some potential moves inside. Also, he'll have a great opportunity to play behind. Timmy Duncan and Wake Forest for Coach Odom. I think that's very important, don't you? Let him mature a little bit. I think he's got to go, a ways to go. Teammate of Chris Caravel, who uh, unbelievably open opportunities. How about a stop, guys? Make a pass. <laughs> Jermaine O'Neal from Eddie Cota. Go inside. That's Winston Walton. Some consider him the Tim Thomas of the Midwest as well. Yeah, that, that's the guy that uh, they're all talking about. Great talent. Left-hander, Willie Durst, short. Rebound, Cleves. Here's Glendon Alexander. Pulling up at the free throw line. Loose ball, Cota. Coming out of the pack. Hamilton underneath. And numbers, huh? You'll be saying that all game. Four on one. Guys, it's too early for this. Here's Nate James. Bounce pass to Hamilton. Great, great one. The cut, but you got to get back and play a little bit of D. Nate James, going for his open floor. Explosive kind of play. Gets into the lane. St. John's prospect ball in Frederick, Maryland. Here's Eddie Cota. Look at the defense here. James looks like he may have gotten away with a walk there. And Nate James, interesting story on him, Coach. At St. John's Prospect Hall, he basically played inside, but he won the three-point shooting contest. That's here. what everybody said. Uh, he won the sportsmanship award as well from our ball, named in honor Baldy Reed, a longtime politician and recreation man in Pittsburgh. Son Brian, college coach. Great family. Lob pass to Dersh. And Nate James will draw the foul inside. Identifying uh, your partner here. A little difficulty. Any penetration, no support. Their high school coaches uh, have to be a little bit upset. Nate James step into the free throw line. Now the line on him is he plays bigger than he is. That uh, your comment on their, his inside game, killer inside. Undecided right now, but Maryland Duke in the hunt for his services. And the East team trying to keep the running going, and they're doing it very well. We'll be back in a moment. Well, Thursday here at Pittsburgh, players on both teams visited the Ronald McDonald House, which benefits from this game. The houses are homes away from home for families of seriously ill kids receiving hospital care. Then it was on to Children's Hospital to spread some more good cheer, and our roving CBS camera crew managed to put East star Nate James to work. Okay, I was just wondering, how does it feel to be able to touch these young kids' lives? Well, I mean, it feels great. I mean, I, I just love to come here and uh, do what I can do and make them happy and make sure that they're, they're going to be real healthy and they like basketball. There's Nate James. I'll tell you what, he's trying to take our job. <laughs> Articulate and a guy that uh, won that sportsmanship award, as I said. So a lot of 
good moments here this week for him. And, and last year, I got to the hospital and to the house. It was a wonderful feeling. Well, I got to get back, guys. This is a little too early, not to guard, Gus. But it was such a touching atmosphere to see the Ronald McDonald House. What a wonderful job they do. And McDonald's is not all about making money. It's a lot about helping. Here's Richard Hamilton hauling down the rebound. We'll play for Jim Calhoun next year at Connecticut. Eddie Cota on his way to Carolina. Crossover, left hand, get it out of here. Lauren Woods, Woods with the rejection. Here he goes again. Jermaine O'Neal. Not here. Ooh, got to get control. Uh, Mateen uh, just sort of slapped at it. Ed Cota went to the goal down this end, thought he had one. He's a terrific finisher, too. Plays in the crowd. Likes those Guy Roger Flyers. Uh, so you're going to Guy Rogers, the old Temple player, played with Wilt in the NBA. But going to Carolina. Ball Whoops. pops out, and this will be a traveling violation called against Winford Walton. He had a chance to see Lauren Woods rejected. Right here, White, you got him. Two shots. He's uh, Cardinal River College Prep in St. Louis. Average close to eight block shots per game in high school. And they talk about him, uh, block shots, runs, soft hands, a lot of nice things. A little bit weak physically, but he will gain some weight. And if Duncan stays, as you know, then I think it will be a great help to him. And the more you hear... Duncan Maystead. Uh, rumors this week up in New York. Mike Bibby back in the game. No look pass. Earl wheeling. Got his man in the air. The go, left go, go. hand drops. That was a nice experience move. The pumping. First two points of the game for Lester Earl. Amazing you know, how he came off arthroscopic surgery this year. Here we go. Now let him go. Let him go, Willie. I want to see this. Oh, uh, a little yoke. On the brow, that's a rotator cup breaker. <laughs> well, he won the slam dunk, didn't he? And Bibby uh, saved the ball to Hamilton. Why don't we just all stand aside and let him go paint the, uh, the rim? Uh-oh. Pass Bibby. Troy Benjamin. Meanwhile, on the other end, Willie Durst taking off. And he draws the foul on the baseline. Watch him run here. Well, this is just a great feel for one another. Everybody in the house going, boy, what a bad shot by Bibby. Nice setup. And then the completion. And they do enjoy themselves. And Benjamin with a little sway and go by. Now, Corey Benjamin had a great Nike camp. One reason. Mike Bibby really put it on the for him and he just laid it up laid it out just there. swing just swing baby uh, well what are some of the schools like Oregon State guess his brother's there and uh, Syracuse sneaking in the picture they tell us along with UCLA and you got one a favorite for him I don't know I'd like to go play with my brother <laughs> as you'll ever see. Now coming up next, CBS Sports sets the scene for the national championship game at the Meadowlands. It all starts with college basketball's Road to Glory, a special look back at the four most memorable NCAA national championship games since 1982. Then, Quinn Buckner and Billy Packer, Packer preview this year's national championship matchup, Syracuse and Kentucky, the final two. It all comes your way next right here on CBS Sports. And they were terrific games, I thought, both from a fan, coaching, and player standpoint. And just outstanding basketball and the level of intensity. Don't you think that's no question about it? Just really, really happy for the people of Syracuse. Team has really come a long way with, the, with that zone defense. And even uh, Beheim showing personality with that little 2 3 matchup. That uh, little showtime at this stage. <laughs> Guys going up and down. Not real sound basketball. 
How do you think Pete Carolla feel about this particular run right now? He would have no hair at this point. <laughs> he would have ripped it all out. Nice fake by Kobe. Froze the D. Kobe grabbing his knee after that play. It's Bibby. Way off the mark there. That's a brick. Shaheen Holloway, no look to Thomas all alone. Well, some people think they may team together. You mentioned some of the universities, Seton Hall, Rutgers. You know George Blaney at Seton Hall would love to be able to get these two Jersey mm -hmm. kids. Also Bob Winslow at Rutgers. Yeah, sure would. Good call, you're backing his way in. Knocked away by Ebdemar twice. Kobe Bryant, cross court pass, Holloway. Oh, oh nice oh. the crowd has come to see. Shaheen with a little magic too, guys. Oh, that was pretty. Oh, there are dunks. And right down here, uh, Jason Kyer, who I think is going to be a terrific player, gets the little scrape on him and a little between the legs. The crowd gets to see it a second time in the building. That was pretty. And Voss saying he wants a little piece of the action. 7.21 to play in the first dive. The East on top of the West. Oh, gosh, you got to have confidence in your handle. And Shaheen certainly does right here. The Ivan Drago of college <laughs> basketball with the thump. The Bulgarian Larry Bird is what they call him, and he is thinking of Indiana State amongst others. How about the terrific defensive reaction? <laughs> Coach Johnson, <laughs> are you in charge of that end of it? No question about it. <laughs> I want to see him go right to the basket and throw it down as many times as they can. 7.17 to go. Well, they start out with their guy, and then they disappear. Mike Robinson, short, knocked out of bounds, and went the other way. Right now on the backcourt, Steve Jackson and Holloway, guarded by Bibby. Lob pass, Kobe Bryant, stolen away by Benjamin. Here's Bibby. Bibby does see those, see those eyes. Good, good. Tim Thomas got a hand in there, Bibby. Unloads it up. Pretty. Eight points for Mike Bibby. Here's Holloway. Oh, great look. Kobe Bryant on the backside for the reverse lane. What a great use of the rim. He knew if he tried to dunk, he did got a straight, very intelligent play. And unselfish by Voss. And Kyer being played tough because he can shoot it. Benjamin. Lester Earl jump rope. Tipped up and back in by Mike Robinson. Robinson. Here's Holloway. Woo! Should have taken it, maybe. Huh? Shaheen Holloway really quick off the dribble. That he is. He can blow by people. Not a bad finish either. And he's getting position to do so much damage. Steven Jackson right there. Five-point game. 5.57 to go. Here's Earl. There you go. The Duke. Of Earl. He can attack, can he? Out of Glen Oaks High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's undecided so far as well. Practice in that pregame. Just showing you his range. That was past the NBA line, Gus. On the other end, Benjamin still taking his shots. Comes up with the steal and his foul. Uh, you love your point guards to give it up. Bibby at the one end, and right here, Holloway gets control. Good vision. Little slip pass and the extra look by Voss picking up the American game. And this Duke, Duke, Duke oh, man. of Earl completion. Gets a little offense. He is going to be a tough talent. A lot of Tulane and LSU talk about him. And you see Kobe Bryant. Look at him closely. 
a resemblance to Michael Jordan. And his game a little bit, too, and the way he deals with people, the same. A great order in his life. A lot of NBA people here looking at him, which is sort of sad in our way, selfish, I guess. Uh, it'd be interesting to see which way he goes. You mentioned the dad, the only college coach in the building, because he is the dad. Joe Brandt, the assistant at LaSalle. Here's Holloway. Loses it. And look at all the red shirts down the floor if they get up a look. Alexander to Walton. They keep playing defense like this. It's going to be Alexander's a ragtime. <laughs> Bad. Steve Jackson to Estimar oh, for the layup. Pretty fancy, too, huh? A little counter. How would you like to chart the shots, huh? I don't think anything's been out of the three second lane. Looks like Kobe Bryant got a finger in the eye on the other end. Eftemar fouled going to the basket by Woods. So Kobe Bryant holding his face there. Looks like he will be okay. May have caught a finger from Winford Walton trying to steal the basketball. Uh, this is one of the few aggressive stands, and they paid for it. Maybe they know better than we do. And Kobe looks okay as he recoiled and then walks out of the game and uh, the serious look of a concerned dad joe jellybean bryant a lot of fun in his game and very well respected the coaching profession as well and what he has done the sense of the maturation process it's, it's amazing to see him deal with the media all week long and cope with the sameness of the questions and uh, n never lose that charming way 47 to 39. Under five to play in the first half. Brown rebounded by Nate James. James leading the way. Hamilton deals at Dakota. Jermaine O'Neal with the rebound, and he has it taken away by Walton. Lauren Woods on the baseline. Strong. Rebound Nate James. Hamilton for three. Gerald Brown. Winford Walton. Count it. Ten points for Walton. There's James, top of the key. Uh, you mentioned Walton. Uh, people feel he's got a game. A little bit inconsistent. He can shoot it. A lot of people think like Chris Mullen, huh? I believe the Roy Dervish. That's a Howard Garfinkelism. I thought I'd slip in there. <laughs> Howard usually on the committee at table as they make the, the selections during the course of the year. Five star. Camp is a pleasure in the summer as all the great ones waltz through there. Coming up tomorrow, the moment we've all been waiting for. The showdown for the national championship. It all starts with the prelude to a championship at 9 o'clock, followed by the national championship game, Syracuse and Kentucky. And that's uh, Rick's uh, early years in coaching up in Syracuse, when you think of it, under Jimmy Bayheim. The 0-2-3 zone better be effective and move out because shots like that will reign supreme as Alexander knocks one down. Does Syracuse have a chance to win that game? I, I think they really have to do a good job valuing the basketball. The wear and tear on your psyche is the difficulty. Lazarus Sims, one of my favorite players, the way he has taken this team under his control. Great leadership qualities. And, of course, John Wallace, uh, not too bad a performer either, guys. He can play a little bit as well. We'll be back in a moment. Morgan Wooten, the legendary coach at DeMatha High School in Washington, D.C. He is the selection committee chairman of the McDonald's All-American High School basketball game. In attendance today, and John Wooten 
an advisory committee chairman. And Coach Wood not here. He suffered a minor accident and decided to stay home. But he sends his regards. And some of the luminaries alongside Morgan, Sonny Hill, famed for his contributions to basketball in the city of Brotherhood of Love, Bob Gibbons and Tom Kinchowski, who evaluate high school kids all year long and do such a great job. Here's Brown. Tried to needle it inside to Glendon Alexander. And this time Brown just throws it out of bounds. Gerald Brown on his way to Texas A&M. Coming up. On at the half, Andrea Joyce and Quinn Buckner will get you caught up on all the latest news surrounding tomorrow night's big basketball game between Syracuse and Kentucky, live from the Meadowlands. Alexander. Off-balance shot, he'll get his own rebound and stick it back in. Quinn ought to get paid for overtime this weekend, don't you think? Uh, I know he wouldn't like the style of play right here. Uh, nobody guarding, paying attention, running in the offense. He had everything organized when he played. Coda trying to feed it inside to Dirsch. Back outside, Nate James. Three-pointer won't go. Saved by Richard Hamilton. Here's the left-hander. This didn't get it up high enough. And look at the only one back is Dirsch. And uh, a fumble and by Brown. Man O'Neill. Out of Columbia, South Carolina, Eau Claire High School. He's undecided right now in terms of where he may be going. Still has not passed the exam. Mm -hmm. They think he's the pure center of all out here. Nice little follow by Woods. O'Neal right on cue with the rebound of the kick out. Here's Dirsch. Dip back out to Coda. Yeah. And he'll get the roll. And Eddie Cota, what a great story on him. Uh, it's amazing. The kid that from Tilden High School up at St. Tommy Moore in Colchester, a combination guard. One and two. Can handle it well. Can shoot it. And that's not too bad from DB. <laughs> the range. Alexander. They say he enjoys shooting in the basketball. O'Neal putting it on the floor. Tipped up and back in by Eddie Coda. Now, Coda out of Tilden High School in Brooklyn, and he played for Rock Eisenberg. Ended up transferring to St. Thomas More School in Connecticut, and his parents were both in a very serious car accident in Panama. Rock Eisenberg wanted to get Eddie out of Brooklyn, and into a positive environment, so he sent him to St. Thomas More in Connecticut. And, and a guy that likes to distribute the basketball, Tom Kinchasti says he has an old-fashioned game. Now, whatever that means, uh, he looked me right in the eyes, though I understood. <laughs> uh, I think he likes the organization, getting others involved. A simplistic approach. A mature youngster, a little stronger than the others. Uh, uh, he does finish plays, as we said earlier. Play for Dean Smith next season. Not a bad spot to go. And Gerald Brown uh, shoots the three passes. Down at Texas A&M, as you mentioned, Mitch Bonagura doing the recruiting. Tony Baroni, and then they get a look late. One of the longer shots of the half, huh? And that is the end of the first half of play with the score, the East and the West all knotted up at 55. Andrew Jordan. West and East all knotted up at 55 at halftime. CBS Sports coverage of the McDonald's High School All-American game will continue after this message and a word from your local station. The Allegheny River in downtown Pittsburgh and here at the McDonald's All-American High School game. It's a tie score at halftime, 55 apiece. Gus Johnson along with Coach Raftery. Coach, uh, a lot of action in the oh, first half of play. 55 points each, uh, just amazing. And I, I do think if they address some defense and pass the ball up, but we do have some action in the open floor. The give up and Walton, the recipient, not too bad. The jam, but one of the most exciting plays of the half. And the little guy with the kick out pass now 
it looks like he's going to go himself or give it to the wing. Head him off, and Voss get a big bag out of that, and that's Shaheen Holloway's game, creating for others. And not too bad here as a guy that the pro scouts are looking at out in the open floor, made the three, open game, whatever you need. Now, last year, Kevin Garnett made the switch straight to the NBA, and we asked Kobe why bypass college for the NBA. It's a supreme challenge that every basketball player wants to have and wants to face someday. And, um, that's all it is, really. I understand that college would be a great situation for me, and that's going to weigh my decision. But uh, the NBA factor is just a challenge. Kobe Bryant, and as I said last year, Kevin Garnett, he made the switch. He's playing actually relatively well in, in the league right now. Uh, Kobe Bryant, that's a big decision to make. I would never root against Kevin Garnett. He's got a wonderful personality. Each situation is different. Economics, part of it. Academics, another part of it. Do I qualify? Things of that nature. And the reason I say I wouldn't root against Kevin Garnett is I would love guys to get a chance just to grow a little. To be 18 and 19 and 20, you can't get back. Now, there are situations financially or the home structure that dictate I've got to go out and contribute a little. Those we can't control. But when there's a chance for the maturation process, both basketball and off the floor, to take place, grow, learn, be a part of that environment where you're a kid again or a kid for the few years. Uh, it's such a healthy spot. This is a unique situation. This is the whole package. Some pros feel he's ready, and he, in fact, will be ready. But it still takes time physically, and the road, the travel, the age difference, the disparity in age, the disparity in interest. So uh, I th I'm sure just Dad Joe will have a lot to say and not be selfish in that decision because LaSalle would be one of the teams that he would consider. Only four high school players have made the jump from high school to the pros. Moses Malone, Daryl Dawkins, up, Bill Willoughby, and last year, doing, Kevin Garnett. And this young man trying to become the next, possibly. And the first half will play, plenty of action. Both teams running up and down the floor. Yeah, they sure are. Uh, the free throws, you can see the East uh, getting there a few more opportunities. Look at the fast break points. I mean, that's a season at Princeton, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> that is just amazing. The dunks, East 11 to 5. Got to stop those open floor soirees. Guards got to balance and the peel back by uh, the forwards. And the leading scorers, Winford Walton out of Detroit with 12 points in the first half. So we begin the second half of play. Collier, quick shot, knocked out of bounds, and go ahead the other way. On the floor right now for the East, Shaheen Holloway, Steve Jackson, Tim Thomas, Vasil Eftimov, and Kobe Bryant. All right, let's count the passes. We got one. There is a jump shot. That's the Jordan move. Now, that was not a good one. Nice block by Collier. I don't know if they give it to Bibby underneath or one of the little guys. Yeah. On the floor for the West. The fadeaway, something that Kobe does well. It ends up a little too deep, but good aggressive basketball in here. And I thought that was all ball up top after some of the bang we've seen. Let him go. On the floor for the West, Corey Benjamin, Mike Bibby, Lester Earl, Mike Robinson, and Jason Collier. Incidentally, Collier with that block, his nickname is JC. College Center. During the Lenten season, the uh, people can relate. Here's Holloway. Check back, check back. The ball, and he calmly puts it in. Ten points for Lucille Evdemar. And the East, they take a three-point lead. Here's Earl. Too easy. Well, nice pass, though, to the post. Left to Earl all this week. He's been praised for how hard he's been working. The hardest worker on either team. It's Tim Thomas. Just a little too much in the open floor as Jason Collier tried to move up. He got a kick out. Ten points. Thomas, back door. Lester Earl got it blocked going up the first time and stripped the second time. A steal. Mike Robinson. 
Well, you make a mistake. Uh, this level, the counters can offend you. Hard-nosed guy, they say, Michael Robinson. Nice outside jumper. Finishes, as we just saw. Holloway almost has it stolen away by Mike Bibby. Across the goal. Dealing with Brian, he hangs in the air and draws contact. So Holloway's the kind of guy that really creates some offense. I think when he learns how to set guys up with the organized and then comes back to the ball, he run your set, get it back. He's breaking them down totally, and that's because the defense is lacking. He's just taking advantage right now. But his understanding of that point position will grow, I think. Terrific high school coach, Kevin Boyle. First-year player at Seton Hall, the year I left. I don't think he picked anything up from me. He's had great success. But Kevin's taught him a lot about the game and just that next level, how we can get away with certain things, work on that outside shot. 18-10 remaining in the second half of the McDonald's High School All-American Game in Pittsburgh Civic Center. Civic Arena, rather, in downtown Pittsburgh. Nice to come here without the ice being down, huh? The igloo. Jackson, strong to the basket and an injury. Earl. Lester Earl. Yeah, trying to retreat. We'd love to see him get up. Well, everybody waiting with a bated breath, uh, not only for him to get up, to, but for his decision. Very patient. And as you said earlier, Tulane, LSU. Some people say UNLV involved as well as Kansas. Oh, 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 oh. He competes, doesn't he? Get him off. No question. Great crowd on hand, over 13,000 to watch the ball game today. And so far, they've been treated to a really nice offensive showing. And there you see Charles Hathaway out of Tennessee, heading to Tennessee. He had to sit out of this ball game broken foot. And a franchise player, Kevin O'Neill's getting. Consummate power forward is what people think. His only visit was to Tennessee. That tells you about the charm of Kevin O'Neill. There's Mike Bibby on the baseline. Benjamin. Chin up. Chin down. 11 points. Chin chin. For Corey Benjamin. He's got a lot of life out there too, doesn't he? Ryan sliding inside. Well, you go to the Marines, they teach you how to do this. Huh? You got to pass a physical. Send it in, and then let me go one, two. Pull ups. Having a whole lot of fun. They sure are. Well, undeterred going to the goal. Uh, when they get to college, there'll be some bumps before they get to the rim. Follow there by. Jackson. Here's Kobe Bryant the other way. Oh! Oh! And the rebound and stick back by Steve Jackson. And the dance, huh? 12 points. Here's Tim Thomas. The Holloway and a whistle and foul. Well, there's effort and speed. Uh, but uh, not real ju good judgment here. The one-hander, uh, Michael's kind of a attack of the tin, and Kobe lost control of it. Well, that's what this is all about, having some fun, isn't it? And these kids certainly having a lot of fun. Here's Holloway sliding inside, a little too strong, but Eftemov is there for the rebound, and you really like the way Eftemov plays this game. Yeah, I, I you know, he's going to learn, too. Uh, he, right now, he'll dribble a little bit too much, and... Maybe more of an outside player. Come on. But he can oh, oh, compete. I mean, he's not elevating with these guys, but he's brought, look at the look. Nice pass. Oh. The big fella trying to show the handle <laughs> of the open floor. How about that? Oh. Thoroughly involved in the game. I mean, he's all about business out there. Man, oh, man. Steven Jackson at the other end, and Kobe couldn't handle it. Come on. Here's Robinson. 
that strip coming up. Holloway, two on one, leaving it for Thomas. He can't make the catch, and it's out of bounds. 15.50 to go. The East and West locked up in a good one. Thursday here in Pittsburgh, it was high school's best mimicking the NBA with a three-point shootout and slam dunk contest. From long range, there was no beating Nate James from the D.C. area. And then the West Lester Earl, he provided the highlight of the evening, winning the slam dunk contest and wowing the judges in the process. Yes, he could take off with the best of them. But Coach John Miller really commented about how well Nate James has played this week and how, in a sense, he's surprised a lot of people with his ability. Well, the three-point shot, I think, shocked everybody because they say he's a killer inside, holds his guy off, seals, uh, tough as heck down low, and uh, now broadening his horizons and with that little microphone in hand and charm and wit, we're in trouble. Gary Williams. Mike Krzyzewski hoping that he'll sign on the dotted line with them. 15.43 to go. Here's Collier backing his way in, and he draws contact. And he's probably shocked. Uh, they ran a little set. Got a pass to the box. <laughs> <laughs> nice look by Collier. The guy that uh, Bobby Knight's going to enjoy having in the program. A lot of people, uh, Tom Conchassi said, clay in the hand of the master. <laughs> How about that statement? Bobby Knight sure has won his share of basketball games. Uh, Evans now, a lefty as well. Not the inside game of Collier. I mean, this, this is a, a guy who can play all oh, oh, my goodness. That's almost uh, top of the top. Mike Benjamin with the strong finish. Kobe Bryant backing out and take the three. Rebounded by Abdomar, he'll fire and knock it down. Nice tip to himself, and he's got to get back. He's enjoying it. Now, if he were in college, he would be chastised immensely. How about that hang time? you got to get yourself back and in position. Oh. Benjamin ends up with the counter, but what a response right here. Terrific look, and all because... Eftemolf was enjoying himself, Gus. And Benjamin knocks down the free throw. 72-69, the East on top of the West. Holloway. Crossing over. Take it off. And a foul inside. Boy, he puts a lot of pressure defensively. Uh, Bibby really got, has quick feet, just couldn't get to the contained position. And obviously, when you're stuck out there with either playing Bibby or Holloway, if you don't have help, which there isn't very much of in this game, you don't get the pinch to stop him. He's undeterred. Now, Shaheen Holloway, earlier this week, the New York Post reported that uh, he was interested in possibly going to Georgia Tech with the possible departure of Stefan Marbury to the NBA. But yesterday in the New York papers, Bobby Crimmins was quoted as saying that he's not interested in Shaheen anymore. And he wants to recruit Kevin Morris, another New York kid, out of King High School. Mm -hmm. Bobby sneaks in once in a while and grabs a guy. I should not be interested in this guy. Well, that's very true, but I guess he's probably committed to the other. That's what happens. Uh, you tell a kid you're the only one I want, you're the only one I love, the only one I cherish. <laughs> you don't want to get caught in the middle. <laughs> Here's Jermaine O'Neal, rejected by Laura Woods. That's a third block shot for Woods. Pretty good reaction in the hole, but a big fella up. Not here. A good timing, and no body contact as well. And we talked about physically how he will get a little tougher, put a few pounds on him. Eddie Cota trying to shake up Mateen Cleaves. It's Cota again. <laughs> Lee can't touch it. Finally does. Now look at over. Look at this gamble. Oh. And it's pinned on the glass by Jermaine O'Neal. Nate James coming out. He's left all alone. 
O'Neal with the rebound. And he travels underneath. Nice basketball, though. Good, silent look by James. Had a couple options. Dersh in the corner. Keeping track of those dunks for us, huh? We got 14 for the East, 7 for the West. Longwood posted up. That call you can see there, just not knowing which move to make. Nate James. Well, he's got the, every, the whole package, huh? The finish, the kick. Eight points for James. We have a lot of cosmetic reactions after dunks. He pass ahead to Dersh, three on one. Dersh has it stripped away. He's fouled by Cleves. Now, Willie Dersh going right to the goal. Hadn't had the touches too often, but uh, Nate able to sing his own tune and do the little strut. So, Nate James, we've been talking about him. Love to see him play with Keith Booth and Ron Profit of Maryland. Pretty good. How about the improvement of Profit this year? What a player. In, in the backcourt, got a little better. Stokes, uh, solid. Stokes, another one from and, Philadelphia. And, and you lose Joe Smith. I mean, the tough kind of a year for Maryland. It, it, it's just they never got it going. It tells you how important Joe was. And I thought with the seniors, well, maybe. And they did get in the NCAA. I mean, nothing wrong with that. I thought Gary did a great job with those guys. There's James. Eleven points for Nate James. Maryland lost a very good young player from Laurel, Maryland, which is basically about five minutes from the campus. Lewis Bullock can get the place for Michigan now. Great. Terrific outside shooter, isn't he? Big coup for Gary Williams to pick up this kid. Inside, O'Neal. Well, stretch out and grab it. To do it. Something James can't do. Maybe he's got to work on his post passing. Twelve twenty nine to play. Eighty to seventy one. The East on top of the West. This series tied at nine games apiece. Brown trying to spin inside. <laughs> he got it to fall, but he's called for traveling. Can't get a, a break, Gerald, as he got to the goal. The Texas A&M guy we mentioned a little earlier. Going to help that program. And if you're counting, that's the 23rd turnover by the West. Oh, spits the block, but nobody reacted. Nate James with the follow, however. He's got a little rhythm, though, to him that step. 13 points for Nate. Back door, Alexander, good catch, goes up. Stripped away by James. Here's Eddie Cotto. In the middle, Dersh leading it for Nate James. Nice look by Dersh. And Coda very unselfish. Remember he said old-fashioned? He's told to me, got it to the middle, fill the wing. A lot of guards want to take it to the middle. And now Dersh has no place to go. So real heady play. Went for Walton. Inside Alexander, and he's fouled. Now coming up next, CBS Sports sets the scene for the national championship game at the Meadowlands. It all starts with college basketball's road to glory. A special look back at the four most memorable NCAA national championship games since 82. Then, Quint Buckner and Billy Packer preview this year's national championship matchup between Syracuse and Kentucky on the final two. It all comes your way next right here on CBS. They're looking at the coaches on the side. What a thrill for both guys, Nate Harris and John Miller, to be amongst this talent. He's still running and passing the ball extremely well. We'll be back after this. 72. That guy could run the football a little bit here he in Pittsburgh. Sure, and he was the answer to some prayers a few years ago, the immaculate reception. Franco Harris, Jersey guy, incidentally, and Penn State. So far, this game... Dunks, I guess that's the biggest statistic. And rim hangs are cracks uh, statistics staff coming up with some pretty good stuff here and also shot clock violation. How about that? Get it? That was a nice insert by the truck. 
<laughs> there have not been any, nor will there be any. It's James inside. And Nate James really playing well. 15 points for him now. They go inside. Walton turn around, jump shot. And this will be basket interference. Well, they do get up. Gerald Guys, Brown. Great reaction by Brown, huh? They leave it go, though. Now, here's the shot clock. Let's see how long it takes them to get a shot off. They get 35 seconds. Oh, now this is a, a, a set with a little involvement, though. Man, 21. That was uh, holding the ball. It's almost like a weave, huh? It's usually been six, seven, or eight and out. Maybe they're fatigued. Top of the key, Woods. Pump fake. And he's fouled. Now that's more like it. <laughs> Neither team doing very well hanging on to the basketball. 23 turnovers for the West and 21 for the East. Well, you can see where organization uh, comes into play. Uh, the coaches here are only having a few days and uh, not the, everybody a big time player. They're not willing to get down and guard and give them themselves. 10.35 to go in the second half. The East leads the West 86-73. This is the McDonald's High School All-American Game from the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Gus Johnson along with Bill Rafter. Eddie Dirsch cut off on the baseline by Brown. And they'll get it back out to Eddie Cota to restart the offense. And they're running some offense now. I think fatigue setting in. Coda in the corner. Uh, and a back screen by Dirsch. How about this? Ten seconds to go on the shot clock. And Coda will get the roll. With a little touch. And we told you about Eddie Coda. His mother and father in the accident in Panama. His father was paralyzed and had to stay in the hospital for two years. His mom underwent 14 operations and is now in a wheelchair. We are very proud that their son has been able to go to high school and graduate from high school and get ready to be going to play for Dean Smith in North Carolina. And they'll enjoy him down there as Dersh enjoyed that slam. Uh, a little more active Willie Dersh now. Here's the kick out. Hamilton. Nice look to Kota inside. A little breakdown right now. And Nate Harris has got a whole new group coming in for the West team. Here's Cleves. Tom is going to enjoy him. Terrific recruit. Chance to move right in there. Explosive, good penetrator. And Winford Walt with the bucket on the other end. Inside again. That's Hamilton. Really? Ray Allen up there? Jerome Sheffer not going to be around. Chance to come in and be a factor. Meanwhile, this kid, Winford Walton, who is undecided out of Detroit, he's a really good-looking prospect there. He had a great first half. I mean, even the, the offensive interference, that should have gone down for him. He's got 19 already. James stolen away. Lyndon Alexander in the open court. Lead pass, Brown. Well, you mentioned more, you know, a, a sleeper school as UAB with him. Oh, my goodness. Too easy. Length of the floor, the floor pass. Uh, Luther's got a buddy down there, Charles Williams at UAB. So, Mo, uh, Bartow's son is taking over. And it's rumored that Johnny Gaston, his head coach at Pershing High School, he may be heading for UAB as an assistant coach. If they can get the big guy. Go, go, go. Please. Well, Tom Izzo, uh, this year the backcourt a little bit on for him, and that's what the team brings to that program. Both teams kind of coasting right now. 7.40 to go, 99-83 in the East. CBS Sports coverage of the McDonald's All-American High School basketball game. We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. Stay with us.
CBS Sports presents the McDonald's All-American High School Basketball Game, sponsored by McDonald's, official break of the Olympic Games. American Honda, who has been making quality automobiles in America for the past 12 years. And by the Body Heat Activated Degree Antiperspirant and Deodorant. Just a beautiful day in downtown Pittsburgh on the Ohio River and a perfect day for basketball. The East and West in the McDonald's High School All-American Game where the East they lead at 99 to 83. It's 7.37 to play. Entertaining. I got a lot of free willy. I got a trivia question for you. All right. Name the three rivers here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> uh, Ohio. Monongahela. And the Allegheny. Oh, my gosh. I tell you. Well, I, I've you been here. You surprise me uh, every time I work with you. Well, I've been here a few times. <laughs> Up to see the Pitt Fieldhouse or in the Civic Center. Plus, they have a few establishments along the waterfront. <laughs> These kind of games, uh, they have a rhythm that... Uh, is strictly freelance, freewheeling, and there are some players that just don't get enough touches. A nice hold here by Bryant, a little detected. They're going to give an intentional foul. Now, easy, easy. Are they going to switch it just to two shots? No, oh, they are going to go with the. Uh, that's in the rule book. Kobe Bryant has to be. Smiling after drawing the intentional foul for Corey Benjamin at the free throw line. Benjamin, three of five from the line. He's got 16 points and five rebounds. And Ronnie Fields not here, one of the McDonald's All-American Gus uh, teammate last year of Kevin Garnett at Farragut High uh, over overcame or is in the process of overcoming a terrible car accident. And uh, hopefully he will... Be back and healthy. Great kids. Saw him last year in St. Louis. Frank Rodebray and we and uh, the McDonald's people wish him a speedy return to good health and a great career at the ball. Suffered that spinal injury in a car accident in February. Look at that handle. He's flying around the back. Tipped up and in, but the basket will not count for Ebdomov. Basket interference. Well, it's uh, exhibiting new talents, a little bit of a extra showtime, extra skip in your step, and that time normally Kobe would have given that one up. From downtown, that's Mike Robinson. Look at that rebound by Collier. Oh. And the finish. Strength to conclude. He will be a factor in the Big Ten. One of those great college centers who probably will be a forward in the NBA down the road. Seven feet. One thing they say about Jason is that he really has shown the ability to pick up things quickly. Mm -hmm. And, and a, as noted earlier, a finalist in the backstroke, so a terrific athlete. He'll take it to the goals, got the three. Really a solid performer. Reminds a lot of people of race with friends in Kansas. Here's Earl inside. And Lester Earl gets the bucket. Interesting, the LaFriends uh, comparison. He may be a little stronger, lower. Don't you think? I mean, the potential of it. And Earl, who is a physical specimen, good position, weak side. Expand that offensive game in the next year or two. He will be something to ball. One thing about Lester Earl, yesterday after everybody left the gym, he was still working out, shooting jump shots, trying to get better. Look at this play. Saved by Bryant. And Steven Jackson will hammer it down. 103 to 88. Oh, this is not the NBA or even college. This is high school basketball, the best in the nation. So it's tough to evaluate guys if you're a professional scout here. Another good inside position by Collier and a good look. Jackson kicking it out. Nick Thomas with an open look. Oh, carry ball. Didn't follow a shot, rebounded by Williams, but Benjamin, but it's knocked out of bounds by Tim Thomas. A good hustle earlier by Kobe Bryant in the open floor. 
nice little dish by Haas, and here he knew he had all white shirts and no red Lumi. And you can see there, there's no enforcement either because the red shirts in a regular game would be hustling back there to try and defend. Mike Bibby back in the ball game, and who hit the jump shot? Bibby. 11 points for Bibby. Showing his range. Saw his handle earlier. Holloway. Back in the old heyday, the Sixers, 75, 79. One of those guys that could play face in the basket, too. Joe's big, individual, away from the hole, good passer. I think Kobe's a little bit better. Uh, Joe, I didn't mean to say it, Joe. It was Gus Johnson that said it. That's right, that's right. Gus Johnson said it. <laughs> At the same age, a little bit better. It's uh, how you progress from here that counts. Ryan running the floor. Gets it from Eftemov, and Kobe just sends it in. I think he may be a little bit better. He's trying to prove you right, Gus. <laughs> nice hesitation. At stage, as you say. Patience on the release by Collier. Another thing about Kobe, his dad playing in Italy for eight years. He picked up a second yeah. language. He speaks fluent Italian. There's a jump shot by Steven Jackson. He's got the whole package, as they say, Brian. Extraordinary student, great stats scores, high-class rank. A Grand Hill type is another one, and it was the speed of Holloway not happy with the finish. Would you give that Grand Hill analysis? Uh, would you concur? As a matter of fact, Grand Hill was here earlier this week as a judge for the slam dunk competition along with Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback and wide receiver Cordell Stewart. And Hill spoke with some of the kids and he publicly came out on the record and said that he doesn't think anybody should travel from high school straight to the pros because for him, the adjustment of coming out of Duke after four years in college to the pros, it's been very tough for him in terms of dealing with being a millionaire and also dealing with the financial obligations that he, ha he now has. So he said, hey, stay in college, enjoy it. Well, I would agree with him, but he's got the ideal structure that a lot of young guys don't have. I mean, he had solid home life, uh, people who watched over, made sure he studied, and that's why he's such a success. Big decision for Kobe. Tomorrow night in New Jersey, John Wallace leads his Syracuse Orangemen into the NCAA championship game against Kentucky. Wallace and company will try to continue their Cinderella run, which resulted in last night's upset of Mississippi State. But Kentucky figures to be a formidable foe. The Wildcats rolled over UMass last night and will hope to celebrate with a championship rendition of My Old Kentucky Home. One more time, it's the NCAA championship tomorrow right here on CBS. And Gus, uh, you know, you hear Oscar, Emmy, and it connotes yes, great success, right? Yes, sir. McDonald's All-American, same thing to anybody in basketball. And even though they're going up and down and there may not be the defense necessary for the rest of their life, they have a charge now, responsibility to behave and do the right things. It's a great honor and distinction because of what that company does for youngsters and gives to others. So hopefully... I tell you, to, to add to that story, I'll tell you how important it is. Michael Jordan in 1981 scored 30 points in the McDonald's All-American game, which is the most points ever scored. Mm -hmm. He did not get the MVP. And the winner was? Adrian Branch. Mm -hmm. To this day, if you ask Michael Jordan about that game and about not receiving the MVP, he is still upset about not getting it. Isn't that amazing? Hey. Well, there's a serious move to the goal. TT, what is it in? 12 points for Thomas. 112 to 99. Well, they say he's got it all. Mentally get involved, tough little pass. Uh, Bibby smiling. And Tim Thomas smiling, too, when he gets the opportunity 
to do some damage around the goal. Look at that crossover move. Not too bad. Not too shabby, Timmy. Tim Thomas. Rutgers on the list. Seton Hall on the list. 112 to 99. Gersh. Dakota inside. Little dribble to the top of the key to maybe work some clock here. Yeah, John Miller calling out a play. Gersh is free over there, but uh, well, they got a fight. Seven on the shot clock. Gersh from the corner. Rebound Nate James. Weak shot there. Outlet pass. This is Robinson. Here's Robinson straight to the goal. Nobody picking up any charges, are they? <laughs> Not really. I don't think we've had one yet. 2.31 to go. 112-101. East leading the West. Trying to snap the tie in the series to go up 10-9. They go a little 1-4. They tried the lob look on the first sequence. Dakota, dribble penetration. Nice look. Oh, and he got the roll. How quick does he release the basketball, too? I mean, uh, Kyle, you're looming right there. The ability to get rid of it. They say he's got great lateral movement, big time two guard. A pretty complete offensive player. Can play the one, two, or three for Jimmy Calhoun. Now, don't forget, coming up next, college basketball's road to glory. Patrick Ewing, Michael Jordan. We all talked about college experience in the NCAA championship game. Under two to play. And a steal. Here's Walt. Pull it up for three. Hey, he was right on it there, too, wasn't he? Nice looking stroke. Oh, don't, don't, don't. Just let him go. Can't get there. You don't want to hurt anybody. The team giving it up. And Hamilton uh, just talked about his open floor ability. He says he's got good court vision, likes to pass. Tom Konchowski, everything fine there on the replay. He got up, able to shoot. He said that uh, he's like that guy, the old-fashioned way he earned it. And we got to definitely tip our hats to Tom Konchowski. We got all our stuff from him. Well, Tommy... Uh, in the background always, unassuming and knowledgeable. Chris, I've got a few guys I lean on. Howard Garfinkel being another. Oh, uh, Zig and uh, Walzag. Baseball pass ahead, and Willie Durst looking for Nate James. And it goes right out of bounds. 119 left the East. Trying to hold on. They lead it 116 to 101. It looks like they will. Some very dynamic moves to the basket by both teams. And you mentioned Michael's reaction. Now, that's so easy right there. Michael Jordan's reaction to the McDonald experience and all of these kids. I, as I mentioned, I came in on Wednesday and just getting to know one another, knowing they're going to be playing against one another the next few years. Uh, the great feeling amongst them. Well, he's having a little trouble with the lob there, huh? Some NBA superstars didn't get the opportunity to play in the McDonald's All-American game. Kenny Anderson won, had an ankle injury. Patrick Ewing mm -hmm. didn't get a chance to play because he had already used up his opportunities to play. Right, they had the, they have limits on the amount of All-Star games. 46 seconds left. Hamilton in the corner. Rebound inside. They get it off to Dirk, and he rolls it in. And he'll keep Jeff Jones smiling. Real solid, knowledgeable performer. And Jeff with the solid backcourt. Now, fixing things up a little for Virginia, who has been terrific. And they'll be right back, I think. Here's Dersh. 
running the baseline. Out to Nate James. He'll spot up. Shoots the brick, but it's rebounded on the backside. Hamilton, he can't get it to drop. 15 seconds to go. Right to the basket. That's Gerald Brown, only the second McDonald's All-American to go to Texas A&M. Rebound, <laughs> nine seconds to go. Get the towel out, huh? Get the yoke off the brow. Oh, that's why I never liked the dunk. Just for fear <laughs> of coming up short. Yeah, you didn't want to lose your elbow on the rim. <laughs> and that is the ball game with the East going on to win it big, 120 to 105. And if you like fast-paced action and a lot of dunks, we got a chance to see it today. Well, coming up, we'll spend some time with our most viable player when we return to Pittsburgh. Stay with us. Good luck. Good luck. Final score, the East beats We're the West, right 120 to 105, and standing by with the most valuable player is our Bill Raftery. Well, Gus, thank you very much, Shaheen. Uh, that smile, uh, you lit it up uh, pretty good with the basketball today. No, I didn't try, I didn't try to go out there and get anybody involved. That's all. The child, you know, have fun out there with those guys. Uh, not too many passes, though. Everybody going for themselves just a little bit? Yeah, I think, you know, everybody try to go for yourself a little bit, but me, I was just trying to get everybody involved, get all the big people involved, get a little showtime out there, that's all. Uh, we got a little replay here for you. Why don't you take it? Oh, yeah, between legs to Vaz, right? You... Yeah, that's a big fella right there with the... Mm. That there takes a lot of practice. There you go, baby. Hey, yeah. You could get hurt if you don't do that properly. <laughs> 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 uh, this this kind of an atmosphere during the course of the week, you really get to know one another. Uh, do you exchange thoughts on colleges? Yeah, we all know it's like a lot of us here undecided. We all just trying to politic with each other, you know, try to get one or two people to go to the same school. No, but basically, like I said, we, we always have fun. That's all. Come out and have fun, playing this game. You know, go to the hospital. It was great. You know, get to know a lot of people involved with Pittsburgh and everything. Well, Pittsburgh. Shane, Pittsburgh, Shane, good city. Gus and 